All right, so for this video, we have a uh, basically how to service one of the shark navigators. They come in many different colors, many different uh, styles, but as far as the navigator line is concerned, they're all very similar, if not in some ways the exact same. So we're gonna get started. This silver one I know works. Um, I've already plugged it in. It needs to be cleaned up. The dirt cut needs to be cleaned. So we'll just set that aside. I've already removed the filter out of this one. The same with the filter that goes in here. Now this machine, they appeared to have used um, to clean out a fireplace, which is definitely not advisable for any vacuum, any household vacuum, simply because uh, they're really not made for that. And it's probably why this one was thrown out was because they clogged up the filters doing that. So we're just gonna kind of disassemble this. I'm really on the fence as to whether I want to fix the silver one up or not, just because of that reason. You look here, you can see the motor right down in there. And I'm really inclined to think that a lot of that dust got into the motor and probably messed it up, which leaves us with our really our only option would be to uh, fix up this purple one if it works. One thing I do like about these shark vacuums is they're very much a modular machine, at least as far as removing the attachments. So this hose likely needs to be replaced. So I'm really inclined to think that this thing is uh, past its prime. Uh, we might not go too much further with this one. However, this purple one, of course the tweakers didn't really leave me much to test this out with. That's good. So this thing works. So I'm in the process of removing the cord. I believe this is a, yeah, it's a T15 bit. You will have to use a security bit on this. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those here because you can see it's got the little nipple in the middle of it. It's a Torx security bit. Sometimes you'll be able to get away with using a normal Torx bit like I am. Um, other times, well, you won't be able to. It just really depends. what happens when you use that's what happens when you use a vacuum to clean out a fireplace so i mean i could probably clean all that out that motor might be okay but truly i just really don't feel like doing it and i've got another one here that works so that's all there is with pulling a cord one of these navigators. And right up here. We'll be putting that on the purple one. Now I do want to get another thing out of this besides the motor, which we're gonna set on the ground. I wanna pull the switch out. So normally what you're supposed to do is take all this stuff apart to get to the switch which honestly it's a little bit easier just to do it this way if you're scrapping a machine all i'm going to do is kind of pry underneath it and that pulls the tabs up and assist the other side be very careful and bonus points if you get all the wiring out in one piece forgot the blue one so partial points you know this switch is good so we're going to keep this but the rest of this I don't need. Might be some small things. I'm gonna pull these hinges off. Now we can do the same thing with this. This one thankfully is a little bit easier to get into because it has Phillips screws. Very carefully. So 
coming out just like that. Same thing to access the cord. Now we just have to uh, disconnect these white wires and the two black ones. So the black one's going to be the easiest. We'll do that one first. Okay. Now same thing. That's it. That's how you replace a cord in one of these. It's really not all that bad. You just gotta take your time. There we go. So everything else is good. We didn't mess with the motor. The motor goes right back into these two slots here. Make sure the uh, Strain relief is okay. So we're just gonna sink all these screws back in. Meet you guys at the next part. All right, so now on the brush roll and the, uh, the beater housing, one of the real common problems with these is the micro switches inside like to mess up. So we're gonna check. You will take this thing apart. Definitely needs to be cleaned off. So on these, you have two screws that are hiding underneath these wheels. So I just like to carefully pry them out like this. You'll have to remove these two up here. Disconnect this hose and be okay. This is that switch I was talking about. You would have to bypass if, for whatever reason, your brush roller was not turning on anymore. That's typically where these things mess up. You can bypass that. I've got a separate video on it. Check the description for that. But what we're going to do is just pull the brush roll out of the housing and clean this up. In order to do that, bearings feel really nice um, but in order to clean these off I actually just use the uh, exacto knife. Uh, you can use scissors whatever and it comes off really easy if you just cut it off whichever way you desire much better that spins really well so I can throw this back in one other thing to check is in here for any sort of clogs everything looks good so overall this housing is really clean i'm not going to really clean it too much more there isn't really much of a point so that's it that's how you get into the housing on one of these not too bad and i'm gonna wash off this clean off the inside a bit all right so i clean that off a bit don't forget this this can fall out as it just did with mine all this is is the uh deal for the light now we just reinstall 
all the screws the same way that they came out. Check the hose on this, make sure this is okay. What I probably will do is clean this out with some water because it's pretty dirty. But for now, I'll just reinstall it. So unfortunately, I don't have another one of these air filters, but this one looks really good. So I'm just gonna reinstall it. There's hardly, there's hardly any dirt in there. In fact, it almost, I would almost say it looks pretty close to brand new. Whatever. And the filter cover goes back on. Make sure you get it on the correct way. There we go. And so I actually have some new motor pre-filters. So the felt one goes in first. And then there's the new one. These are washable. So if you so desire, you can wash your old one. So now to clean this out. You guys, look at this. And a piece of charcoal in here. Don't use your vacuum for that purpose. They make special vacuums for cleaning out fireplaces. Do not use any vacuum, let alone a bagless vacuum of all things, um, on cleaning out your fireplace. But I'm just gonna blow all this out with compressed air. It's gonna make a mess. There we go. So that's what happens with these when they age. There's unfortunately no way around it. You can uh, treat the vacuum 100% correctly, but at the end of the day, that's going to happen no matter what. And I know on the newer sharks, they have issues with the smaller one. It's very much like this, but it goes in the power nozzle. And you can't buy that tube, at least that I'm aware of. Shark wants you to replace the entire nozzle or just buy another shark. So that's one of the main things that I don't like about this particular brand is just the way that you can't really buy replacement parts brand new. The aftermarket has answered the call with some things. Really, it's not all that much. There's a few things here and there that you can get, but for the most part, like gaskets or seals or whatever else you can't get, you have to buy that whole part. So now we're gonna give this thing a try. Looks like we'll have to replace one of those latches, but that's okay. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more. <laughs>